Many phones today have FM radios built in. You may not realize it, but your phone could have an FM radio receiver inside. However, manufacturers don't always include an app to access it. It's kind of odd that a legacy radio format, first popular in the 1980s, is still being included in digital devices today. And most of the time, it's not even mentioned. This quirky situation has come about because there are some places in the world that still rely on FM radio, such as in developing countries. And Qualcomm, who make many of the chips for smartphones and tablets, include FM radio along with other standard phone features such as Bluetooth, Wi-Fi and GPS in their chips. That's because it's easier to make one chip and let the phone makers decide which functions to include in their phones. So if you want to find if there's a radio in your phone, there are third-party apps that can activate the radio. One of the apps that's able to detect if your phone has a radio inside it is called Next Radio. There was even a version of Next Radio for iPhone that could enable the hidden FM radio. The Federal Communications Commission in the United States asked Apple to enable access to the built-in FM radio in iPhones by default to help with natural disasters and communications. But Apple has since deleted Next Radio from the App Store and removed FM radio functions from their chips since the iPhone 7. Samsung has been much more open about allowing access to their hidden radios. In my Windows 11 on Lumia phone video, I was amused that the developers of the Windows on ARM project for Lumia included an FM radio app for Windows. That prompted me to go looking at some of the old phones I have and I found this Samsung Core Prime from 2014. It already has an FM radio app included. To use the radio function, a pair of headphones needs to be plugged in. This is because the headphones also act as an antenna. At this point, after listening to the radio for a bit, the idea of a radio in your phone becomes kind of boring. But if you've seen my videos in the past, you may have seen that I like to try interesting experiments, such as that time I recorded video onto audio cassettes, or that time I turned a broken camcorder into a data backup tape drive. Well, something I always wanted to try is sending images over radio using a method that amateur radio enthusiasts have been doing for decades called Slow Scan TV or SSTV. I downloaded an Android app called Robot36 that does SSTV and I've set up a phone in the background that's going to send images to this Samsung. So let's have a look at receiving some images using the built-in FM radio. Then afterwards, we'll have a look at the phone sending the images and see how all this works. This SSTV software is really cool. I'm running the FM radio app in the background and the Robot36 app listens through the microphone and decodes the images out of the audio signal. I had to set this up with the FM radio playing through the headphones and then feed that back into the microphone. 
While it would be possible to do this in software entirely inside the phone, rather than go to the trouble of doing that, I found the easiest way was to simply get the signal through the headphones and then back in through the microphone for the SSTV decoder. So that's how I set up the receiving station, but I also need something to send the images. So I needed to find a phone with a built-in FM transmitter. These are quite rare, but they were more common in the 2000s, before most cars came with built-in Bluetooth. FM radio was an easy way to play music from your phone directly into your car stereo. Even so, finding a phone with an FM transmitter inside is still difficult. Most manufacturers didn't include FM transmitters because of all sorts of regulations in different countries around the world. There was an Android phone in 2013 by Fujitsu that had an FM transmitter, but it was a Japanese release only and really not easy to get. I was having a look through my junk phone box and I found this Nokia N8. This is Nokia's flagship model from 2010, launched the same year as the iPhone 4. It's got some interesting features compared to other phones at the time, such as a 12 megapixel camera, and it's got HDMI output. But importantly, it's also got that feature that I'm looking for. It has an FM transmitter built in. That means when I play some music on the Nokia, there is a menu option to switch on the FM transmitter. Turning it on causes music to start being transmitted on FM radio using the frequency that you've chosen. In this case, I've set it to 88.1 MHz, which has no radio stations near me. On the Samsung, I've set it to the same frequency. And now we can hear the music that's playing on the Nokia. I'll do a quick range test. This is not a strong transmitter. It's only about 10 microwatts. Static at two meters, three meters, and signal's gone at four meters. So to send the image over FM radio, I've had to upload both a JPEG and an SSTV audio version. The JPEG is just for viewing. The SSTV audio version is what's required to send the actual image. If I had that Japanese Fujitsu phone, I could have done the conversion on the phone itself, but instead I used some Windows software called MMSSTV to do the conversion and then upload that into the phone. Then it's just a matter of playing the converted image as SSTV audio. And this is what the SSTV signal sounds like when it plays through the FM transmitter. Each warble in the sound is a single line of video with both brightness and color information, all encoded in an analog stream. That signal then gets decoded by the Robot36 app in the Samsung achieving my goal of sending images phone to phone without internet or 4G, no Bluetooth and no Wi-Fi. It's been really interesting learning about slow scan TV. Next time I play Portal 1 and 2, I'm ready to decode the hidden SSTV images in both games. I really enjoy making these videos and I hope you enjoy watching them. If you have any thoughts on all this, I'd be keen to hear them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.